Today we're going to be talking about MIDI expression pedals like this one and what you can do with them in Reaper. So this MIDI expression pedal, it's the Moog uh, EX2, I believe it's called. Uh, it's just a sturdy plastic pedal with a foot switch um, or like a rocker switch, uh, which gives you continuous control over some parameter. There are a lot of other expression pedals available, uh, stuff designed for guitars, stuff designed for MIDI keyboards. Uh, so just check the options such as on Amazon. These are going to connect to a MIDI keyboard, make sure that it has an expression pedal jack, and then it sits on the floor and you can control any parameter you want with it. There are only a few things that would actually make sense to control with a foot switch like that, um, but I'm gonna show you some examples. Uh, but first let's look in Reaper and make sure that this is set up in the preferences. So going to preferences, audio, and MIDI devices, and in your MIDI keyboard connection, make sure that it's enabled for uh, the input and control messages. In this case, my Novation Nocturne keyboard has input and control messages enabled. And now let's just verify that it's working and what MIDI CC that it's putting out. So we'll just add in a new track. We're going to give it a MIDI input. So input MIDI. We can just do all MIDI inputs, all channels. Record enable it and um, monitoring enable it. And then we're going to add in the recontrol MIDI plugin. There's actually a shortcut to get to it. Right click the track, go to MIDI track controls and show MIDI track control panel. That just inserts this plugin at the first of the chain. So we'll click on show log and we'll move the pedal. And so I see here CC11 expression as I move it. You see all these different values. So we verified that CC11 is the expression pedal MIDI CC, and it is working on channel one. So we can take that out. So now that it's working, let's talk about some of the different ways that we can use this. We can assign it to an action in the action list. We can use it with a keyboard performance um, to control some parameter in a synthesizer. Uh, we can use this as the expression pedal on a, um, virtual guitar amp, like with Amplitube or Helix, they have a bunch of different wall pedals available. And so we can use that uh, while playing guitar. And there's a bit of a setup for that, so we're gonna save that to the end maybe. So let's start with a simple one, open up the action list, which is usually the question mark key. Here's a fun one, let's do zoom, and we'll just type in CC. Any of the actions that you would want to assign continuous controller like this too would have MIDI CC in the name. So let's do adjust horizontal zoom MIDI CC. I'm gonna click on add and it's waiting for an input. I'll just move that controller. It's come up with MIDI channel one CC 11 and we're using absolute and soft takeover. It doesn't really matter with this, but absolute mode is going to work for a controller that has a beginning and an end like this one. So click okay. And now we can zoom in the project by stepping on the switch or zoom out by pulling it back. Not super useful, but a, just kind of a fun example of what you can do with it. Let's take that off. We could do it for selected track volume. So um, track volume, and type in CC, and now we can do it with a specific one or last touched or selected. Let's do selected and add that in there. And so if I have this track selected. I can control the track volume. Let's look at the mixer while we do this. Can control the track volume through a foot pedal. And if I have multiple tracks selected, they'll all move at the same time. Again, not super useful, but just an example of what you can do. Maybe you'd like to use the last touched parameter. So adjust last touched effects parameter, MIDI CC. And I'll do that. And so I'll, let's just insert re-EQ on here and we'll move this and we'll, we'll get that frequency moving. So now my expression pedal can control the filter cutoff of this plugin. Um, and if I select this and go to gain, I can control the gain of this EQ point. Again, not super useful if you can use a mouse, 
But for people with limited mobility, uh, maybe you're not so good with your hands, possibly this is another option for you. So now let's look at using this with a virtual instrument. So I'm going to right click here, insert virtual instrument on a new track. It brings up my effects browser. I can select a, a plugin by double clicking and it's inserted the plugin. I've got the track record enabled, monitor enabled, and I have all MIDI inputs enabled on here. So this is everything I need uh, to play. I can hear it. If I move the pedal, you can see that the red light is uh, showing that there's some MIDI CC data coming in. This has a built-in MIDI Learn function. Um, some of the plugins will have a button for MIDI Learn. Some of them, it's right-click on the parameter. And this is just built into the plugin. Reaper also has it separately, which is more for automation. But uh, let's just look at it this way. So I'm going to click the MIDI Learn button. Then I'm going to move, let's say, the frequency. And then I move the pedal, turn off MIDI Learn. And now my pedal is controlling the frequency on the synth. You know, when you have both hands on the keyboard, it's a lot easier to use your foot for some of these things. Uh, so that was with the frequency, we can set that to volume instead. And so now I've got volume. So that's using it for controlling the volume parameter in the synth. Now, when you record that, that's just going to be recording into the CC lane. Let's go back to the start of the project and I'll just hit record and I'll just move the pedal. And so you can see the parameter moving in the plugin, but also it's moving, or you can see the CC lane in the MIDI item. If we open up the MIDI item and expand our MIDI CC lane uh, to show what is being used, you'll see a little dot beside the parameter. Uh, so expression, is on number 11 and we can see every time I move the pedal it's put in a point here and between points when I'm not moving it it's just going to continue at that level and if I play this back showing the plugin again we'll see this moving Okay, so I just reset the plugin, and I'll show you MIDI Learn the other way using Reaper's built-in parameter linking. So if I go to the filter again and I move the parameter, and I go to the param menu, I do MIDI Learn. This window pops up. I can move my foot switch. I've got uh, CC11 coming up here. If I hit OK, now my foot switch is controlling the filter frequency again. the level was still linked. But that's one way you can link multiple parameters um, if the plugin itself doesn't let you do that. You can use Reaper's MIDI Learn along with the plugin's MIDI Learn, and you can link multiple parameters. All right, so now let's move on to audio recording and how this is a little bit different. So I'm going to insert a, a track. I'll just call this guitar. I will insert the uh, Line 6 Helix plugin on here. All right, so I've got Helix on the track, and I'm going to set this up with a wah pedal. So I'll just select wah from the list here. Got the, uh, the Chrome Custom is pretty good. But the problem here is that a track in Reaper can only have either an audio or a MIDI input. It can't have multiple types of inputs on a single track. There are two ways around it. We can use Reaper's parameter MIDI Learn to do this, or we can have a child track. So we just add in another track below it and then drag it up so that the guitar track is now a folder. And so we'll set up the second track for MIDI input. So again, I'll just do all MIDI inputs just because it's convenient there. And so we'll call this expression. So. Track one is my audio for the guitar. It's going to record the clean guitar. Then the second track is just a MIDI input, which is going to get that expression pedal 
information. It's going to, uh, we need to remember to record these both at the same time. And we need to remember that the expression pedal track needs to be record enabled and monitor enabled, or that signal doesn't get into the plugin. I'm going to the automation controller assign area here, going to the uh, position, click on control and MIDI learn, and it should get this automatically. And there we go. And so now I can play and control that, that wall pedal uh, with my foot. Let's look at that actually recording. Let's hit record here. And so I've got my DI guitar on the top track, and on the second track, I've got my MIDI CC. One little trick that I like to use along with Helix is linking two controls at once to the same MIDI CC. So if I go to the mix on the wah pedal and do MIDI learn again, both parameters are now assigned to the MIDI learn. And so that looks like this. They're both moving at the same time. I like to set the mix minimum value to about 20 or so. So when the pedal is all the way back, it's letting more of the original signal through. And so it, it doesn't take away all of the signal as it filters. Full up at 100%, both the mix and the position are at 100%. And when I pull it down, I've got zero and 21%. So that's just a little trick that I like to use. Right, so if we want to do this with just a single track, we're using Reaper's plugin um, parameter link junk. So this is a little bit different. I'm just going to remove all the assignments here. Click yes. So because this plugin has hundreds of parameters, you need to assign each parameter that you want to automate using the uh, automation assignment. So. Uh, right click on the parameter, go to automation assign, and go to knob one. So knob one will come up in Reaper's menu now. We can then do MIDI learn on that, move the pedal, and now I've got that assigned. So there we go. So I'm using Reaper's MIDI learn for the parameter that's linked to the automation parameter inside of Helix. It's a bit confusing, I know. But, uh, but yeah, this is just one other way to do it. And what's important here is that you remember to record the automation at the same time as you're recording your audio. So in addition to setting the track to record enable, you need to set this trim button here to either touch or latch or write mode. I'll do latch mode. I'll go into record. So now if we look at this track, we've got our DI guitar here, and we've got this, um, this knob movement, which is linked to that parameter. It's all pretty straightforward, but just remember, if you're recording with this method with the one track, you need to set that track to a automation write mode, which is touch mode, latch mode, or write mode. And if you're using the child track method, you need to remember to set it to a MIDI input and record that track as well. So there you go. That's pretty much everything I can think of on expression pedals with Reaper. You can use it with a synth. You can use it with a guitar amp. You can record on a single track using Reaper's parameter link, or you can use MIDI input on a second track. Whatever method works best for you, but it's good to know both ways. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.